Hi, Chase here at Cole McCoy coming to you with episode number 41 of In the Trenches. What is going on? Uh, we're excited today. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of excited. This is going to be a good one. Cole always brings the heat. Uh, we're going to talk about something that may be a little bit boring for those of you out there, but in all sincerity, it's a very important subject, important topic for any successful producer. And that topic is going to be how to effectively work your book of business. And we got the pro here with us talking to us today about how to do it. Um, so we're going to go over some bullet points, man. Kick this thing off in terms of why is this important to know how to work your book? Yeah, working your book, Chase, is it's not a sexy topic to, to, to talk about. Um, it's something that, you know, for a brand new agent may, may not be what's pertinent. You know, your, your focus right now is you're grinding, you're, you want to get deposits in your account and, and build up that book of business. But for anybody that's been in the business six months or more, this is something that over time you're going to start wanting to implement some of these things. And, you know, sincerely, this can add an extra 20% to your income every year, just using different tools and things with, with the clients that you already have in place to go and make some more money. So this is something again, that if you're not doing it, I highly suggest it. And I'll, I'll put it this way. Um, if I had to go and make $5,000 this week, like pay my bills, like, or I was going to lose my house or whatever, uh, I would go and work my book of business. These people are already buyers. They're, they've already said yes. Um, that's the easiest sale because I have rapport with them. We have a relationship. I know what I know what they want. Wanted that the first time I helped them out, but then you know, obviously, these are people that are more apt to to buy. So, working your book um, can be huge. Just just making sure you have things organized. So, I just want to give some tips and tricks so that way we can uh, you know just do some education on how this might work and and go from there. So, first of all, I want to just reiterate that this. I want to make sure we clarify here. There's a lot of people online that we see on social media and stuff. We're not talking about going and selling your mom, your dad, your correct. Brother. That is not what we're talking correct. about. And we're not. We're also telling you to continue running your leads. <laughs> uh, leads is the name of the game. This is just going to add uh, a wrinkle to your game that to get some more income. So there are shops out there that we've seen tell people like you don't need leads. You don't need. You don't need to buy leads. You do need to buy leads. You don't have to go work your warm market in terms of your family, friends. That's controlled business. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people that you've put on the books. They're good clients. They pay their premiums. And for whatever reason, you're looking to increase. So let's kick it off with CRM, the importance mm -hmm. of having a CRM. Yeah. You answer questions all the time in the group chat. We see it all the time. People are asking, who do you use? What do you use? And how do you use it? How yeah, that so person? CRM is super important. Um, whenever you write a client, if you're writing a lot of clients, you know, for me, when I was first in the business, Chase, I looked at it like I can buy my way to success. So 30 to 40 leads a week was where I was at. You know, I was, I was uh, routinely getting 10 plus new clients a lot of weeks. So um, over time, three, four months go by. That, that's a, a nice little Rolodex of people. And it's hard to remember every little thing about them. And, and so what I would do is I would use a CRM called Less Annoying CRM. There's other good ones out there. Uh, Zoho, I know is one. There's a Map My Customer. There's, there's several. Um, but I use Less Annoying CRM because it's super simple. I can put their name, their address, their phone number, and then I can take notes in there. You know, uh, did they pick the gold or the silver, the bronze plan? Uh, how much premium was it? What's a couple of things from that appointment that I can remember to kind of pick up that rapport and, uh, and, and build it from there? And then there are also some cool features within that CRM where you can export uh, the data and put it into a list to like do like when you're doing send out you know, sending out birthday cards or thank you cards or whatever which we'll get into that but the CRM is is one of the most important things that you can do especially in the beginning I know you're just trying to figure out deposits but uh, make it a part of your your daily routine to add your clients into your CRM and then over time it just makes it a lot less daunting instead of having you know 200 that you got to put in all at once you do them each night at the end of the your day, you just do two or three, you know, from the sales that you made. And then over time, you build up a, a nice Rolodex of people to go and talk to. So, so less annoying CRM is one. Uh, we've heard Zoho. People, Zoho. Yeah, yeah. You can even start as simple and basic, guys, as Google just Sheet, having a Google works. Sheet. Yep. Uh, I actually spoke to a guy yesterday. He's been very successful in the business, got out, got back in. And we spoke about using Google Sheets just because you're able to put all the pertinent information, all the important information in there, and sort, filter. It's a nice starting point. 
And if you, you know, for whatever reason he had, I think Zoho or somebody and let his subscription go, yep. lost the information. So it's easy to enter, easy to track, easy to, to, to kind of navigate through. So it can be as simple as, you know, just Google Sheets. Yep. Next, we're going to talk about what something you just touched on, the importance of sending out cards, thank you cards, birthday cards, Christmas cards. Yep. You do this. Yeah. Why is it important? Well, there's that, that's twofold. Chase, this is something where you, you just finished, and, and I would do this in the beginning no matter what. And I always use a website called Send Out Cards. It's all automated. Um, some people like to personally handwrite a card and put it in the mailbox, or they would have, you know, cards that they had already filled out the main heading. And they always put their name on there. Um, but cards are important. So just imagine, because with in the file expense industry, this is a one call close. So I'm going into to Miss Mary. I spend an hour with her. By the time I leave, I have her social security number, uh, her banking information, her birthday, like anything that I need to be dangerous with that. And now, obviously, we're on the up and up. We're doing things the right way. And, but that's going to create a little bit of anxiety. Um, you know, I, they didn't really know me before I came and now we have a working relationship and they've handed over to me some of their body. Exactly. Yeah. So I like to send them a card, say, Hey, thank you for uh, allowing me to help protect your family in, in their greatest time of need. You've done a wonderful thing. I had a wonderful time talking about, you know, Ohio state Buckeyes or whatever. Um, you know, hopefully your dog, spot gets better you know whatever and then so that it just gives that personal touch that you're a real person because if because you know if i'm a if i'm a scam you chase and i got all your information i'm gone and you're never hearing from me again no, yeah. but i'm giving extra touch points for them to reach reach out and get a hold of me i also give my clients um my information so when they call me i pick up and the ones that are anxious well you should call you pretty quick and, and you can just prove your loyalty there but the cards are, are super important for that aspect of it. But then over time, you can put their birthday in the card too and, and automate a service to send them a card for their birthdays or on Christmas or whatever, um, New Year. There, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, and so there, you can use that in conjunction with your CRM as well. So once you get that big uh, chunk of business and those clients, at, you know, for first of the year, maybe send, send them each a card saying, thank you for, for being a valuable client. You know, just a reminder, if, you're, if you need help with this or this or this or this, feel free to reach out. We would love to help serve you and protect your family. And then, you know, I would get, every year I do that, I always get five or six deals. Um, just right at the beginning of the year from clients I already have that we're looking at, you know, take, you know, at the end of the year and the beginning of the next year, we typically take inventory. Yeah. You know, do I, uh, do, do I have all my affairs and what I want to get better at? And that's a lot of times where people want to add some more insurance to protect their families that they don't feel they have enough. And so um, that's a perfect time to, to get access to those people and, and uh, capture those deals. So it's, I think it's powerful. We've seen over the years, the successful producers do this. So, I mean, it's self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. You did a great job kind of breaking it down. Let's go to increase letters. Yeah. That's something that I think is extremely powerful just because you did right by that person. We fit it into their budget right then and there when we met with them. They said they would like to have more, but right now I'm, I'm about to move out of this apartment and moving to an, the next one, or, you know, I'm about to pay this car off. I'm going to, whatever it may be, you setting that reminder, coming back a year later, however long, break that down for us on how you do that. Yeah. So whenever you are putting in your notes for your CRM, so, you know, it might look something like, uh, you know, I would just take some notes like, Hey, uh, Sally, you know, pick the bronze plan. So whenever I pitch, it's like a gold, silver, bronze option. So I'll kind of gold, silver, bronze. I should have written this out before. So like $100, $80, and $60. So let's just say, yeah, I'll chase one side on that. Let's just say it looks something like this. You can see kind of a gold, silver, bronze. Let's say that they picked the bronze plan at 60 bucks. Well, a lot of times people want to talk about the gold and they'll say, well, can I, uh, can I get the bronze now and add on to it later? You get that, you know, out of every sale you make, uh, out of every two sales you make, I would say one of those people will ask that question. So put that in your CRM, pick the bronze plan at $60 a month, wanted to increase it six months down the road. Most of these people will never call you to increase it or, or, or they, they have good intentions too, but they just don't get around to it. So these are people that you can make note of and put on your calendar or set an automatic reminder to send them a card or an increase letter that says, 
you know, hey, Miss Mary, back in July, we were able to help you with this. Um, I know we talked about, you know, once you got this $60 a month under your belt, adding on a little bit more coverage to get you up to the gold plan, you know, an extra uh, $10,000 would only be 44 a month. You know, or you can do eight thousand at thirty six, or you can do six thousand at at twenty eight, um, and then you have your information there, and they'll call you. So if you do that to, you know, fifteen people a month, um, now over time your rolodex will get bigger, and you'll you'll be at 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 on. But if you can do that to fifteen folks a month, let's just say you got one or two of those people to call you to add on. I mean, that's an extra thousand dollars right there, at least that you're getting to kind of get your month off to a start, a good start, especially if you need a deposit, you know, and, and, and you just want to have that momentum going. So that's, that's a tool that I like to use. And, and, and you're also yeah. adding a little bit more of a binder to that relationship for sure. Because man, Cole didn't forget about me. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, he made that note. I didn't even remember I said that until he said, he told me yep. you're adding a little bit of a binder. To yeah, that relationship. for sure. For I sure. love that. I, I love the increased letters because we had a few people talk about that. I know you were one of them that talked about how you do it at uh, one of our road shows last year. And we had quite a reception uh, come back from quite a few people. Yeah, that and again, that. it's not a sexy thing to talk about, but this, I promise you, will make you more money. Yeah. If you have more questions about any of the tools that we're using or anything, please drop a comment or reach out to one of us. I'm, I'm happy to go through some of this stuff in more depth with you. Um, but these are little things that you can do. Now, at the end of the day, um, I cannot stress this enough. Keep buying your leads. Keep going and seeing people. This is just adding additional income when that time is right. So, Absolutely. Yep. Next one is going to be something that's a little bit weird for some that have never done it, but the drop buys. Yeah. You're going to just drop buy on somebody you've already sold, you've already closed, they're already on the books, and they're still paying. You just drop in randomly. I know Chris talked about this on an episode that we did. Mm -hmm. He said it's powerful. How do you go about doing it? Yeah, so this is something that, like, if I have a person, again, maybe they picked a bronze plan or – they were, you know, they know they needed the life insurance and wanted to get something in place, but they wanted to add on down the road once they got those. This is a perfect situation. Let's say that I'm in an area and I've got a, a gap in the middle of my day. Well, like, like we would go and door knock somebody. I'll also put a client in there too. And I'll just stop by and say, hi, how are things going? And, you know, five, 10 minutes of building rapport, catching up. You say, you know, look, I was just down the road. I wanted to say hi. I know we talked about this last time. How are things going? Or, you know, I know you were talking about wanting to add a little bit more coverage. Again, there's no pressure today. I, you know, I just wanted to say hi and let you know I, I, I was thinking about you. And those are a lot of times the people that are, are going to add way more than you expected because you're there. And it's, and it's just, yeah. So you just literally, like you would do a door knock to stop in, see your client. Uh, and, and if they don't want to buy or if they can't afford it, no big deal that just solidifies that deal even more to that, that you're there to, to, to care for them and take care of them and, and they're not going to leave you. Um, so that, that does a couple things, but just like literally, you know, if I have a, a, a nine, 10, 11 o'clock appointment and then I have a gap until two o'clock. Um, if I'm in that area and I've got clients I haven't seen in a while, especially the ones that, you know, pick the bronze plan, the 40, 50, $60 a month, um, those are the ones that usually have more room in their budget at that point. They've gotten used to that and now they're looking at adding a little bit more. Um, drop buys are, are, are huge. And, and as long, as long as you, you don't push your people around, you know, and, and you, you build a good amount of rapport, they're almost always going to be excited to see you to, uh, to, yeah, to talk about life just in general. So that was one of them that was semi new to me. I mean, I've been around it 13 years. That was semi new to me not too long ago. And it was kind of like, ah, I already door knocked them once. Why are we door knocking them again? Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's service. It's that yeah. service mentality yeah. that, uh, that you've always talked about. I love it. For uh, sure. We're going to kind of transition to next. We're going to talk about going and visiting with people, working your book of people who fell off the books. Mm -hmm. Not the sexy, fun, want to yeah. do it, but it's a necessary evil and yeah. you can pay dividends. Absolutely. So this is something, Chase, that, again, may not be the most fun thing to, to talk about, but um, if you have somebody that cancels, it usually had nothing to do with you. Some, a lot of times something comes up and that, that bill becomes inconvenient or, you know, they didn't have the money that month, but they want their insurance. If these people have a, a proven track record of paying, I like to see four months worth of payments. Um, they didn't actively try and cancel that policy. Something just became inconvenient and that became a little bit much. So those are people that you can go back to 
and get them back on the books. Now, sometimes you can save it and, and have them back pay that premium, but usually by that time it's lapsed and you have to write a new case. Um, again, I don't do this for everybody, but for people that have been paying for a while, we always have some clients that will fall off. Go back and see them, see how things are going. You know, maybe write them a little bit less premium than you wrote them there, there before. Um, but I can, tell, I can tell you, I have one guy named Lloyd in particular, I think, in five years, I've written him up four times, and every time he's paid at least six months. And uh, I keep telling him, like Lloyd, keep this because now you know you're only paying six months, but he something pops up, and he's like, he calls me, no to want more insurance. Um, and so I've gotten to know him, but from that relationship, um, I think I've I have five or six other policyholders because of his his family. You know, they they know me as Lloyd's insurance guy, and now their insurance guy. And it had nothing to do with me pushing anything on them. It's every time I've tried to lower, I'm like, Lloyd, we have to make sure this stays on here, man. Like, I don't want to see you keep going through the cycle of dropping your insurance when things get tight. Like, you're sure, you know, and, and we've, you know, I started him around 65. Now he's probably $48. Um, I'm like, Lloyd, it's okay to not get as much coverage. So you can have that relationship with them. Or if that person actively cancels a few months in, have them go sign a letter. Um, you know, create a letter that says something like, uh, you know, I, I acknowledge that I actively canceled this insurance policy and I agree to not hold Cole McCoy responsible. I acknowledge that I, that I don't, I no longer want this coverage. And what's your reason for doing that? Well, there's a couple reasons. One, I want them to physically sign their name to say that they're no longer willing to protect their family, but also, you know, and I'll go to the client and say, look, you know, I'm happy to help you. I'm glad I got the opportunity to serve you, Miss Mary. But, um, you know, you have a policy in there. When you pass away, your kids are going to look for your life insurance policy. They may find that and call me and be very upset. Now, I, you know, I don't want to get in trouble. And so you get back in front of them and make them physically sign their name, you know, to the extent, to something to the extent of their lapsing their ability to protect their family. Or you could, you know, maybe check a box that says, you know, I just want to reduce my coverage a little bit because it's unaffordable. You know, have them, you know, just get their buy-in on those. And you would be surprised how much more business you'll keep. Um, but also, you know, how many of these people, like, might have a change of heart after they canceled. So um, it's kind of a, a cool – and I didn't, I didn't come up with that. But something that I've found can be very, very helpful. How many um, times will you typically go by and see somebody for somebody on the, on the, on the fell-off category? What's your cutoff? When does Cole McCoy say I'm not doing it anymore? This um, it really just depends. Like, depends on the person. It, your it depends on the person, but it depends because where I work, you know, I, I have a, a large rural area, you know, not a lot of population. So, you know, it may be a few months later I'm going back to that person and you would be surprised how many times something changed or they had another agent come in there and lie to them or whatever. You just never know what you're getting into in these situations. And so it's important to get back in front of your people that fell off. Um, you know, sometimes it's just it was a matter of money being tight that month. Sometimes it's a matter of they had an agent come in and lie to them. Um, sometimes they just legitimately don't want to have insurance and they're fine to make their kids pay for it. Well, that client was a time waster anyway. Um, unfortunately, we'll write those people up because we want a commission. And then, you know, I've, I, I, again, over time, you get better at knowing which ones are time wasters or, or not. But um, those are just some strategies that I think can be super helpful um, to, to help you make more money. Again, whenever we're putting this content out, sometimes it's not the sexiest content. We're talking about door knocking or talking about, you know, some, some but this, this is definitely not a sexy topic, but um, it's, necessary. it's necessary because at the end of the day, I want to put more money in your pocket. And, you know, we, we, we really want to want to continue putting good content out there like this. So, um, this honestly, the reason we did this topic is because we we posted on social media and someone had responded, "Hey, can you educate us a little bit on how to work your book?" So, if there's something on this podcast that you want to hear, please comment down below and 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 say, "Hey, I would love for y'all to cover something like this." We, you know, most topics, not all, are fair game. We'd be happy to go into this and and uh, Chase might have to suffer through some of these boring topics with me here, but. Um, we want to educate you, we, you know, maybe we need to motivate you a little bit, but at the end of the day, our job, whether you're working with us or not, is to help you make more money. When you do well, everybody else does well. It, it gives a better name to our industry. 
Um, so we, we genuinely want to see you succeed. So if, if you're out there struggling, trying to figure this out, and you want some more content, reach out to us, say, hey, Cole, can you cover this for me? Or, hey, Cole, I had this question. Or, hey, Chase, what about this? Um, we want to help. We want to serve you. Um, we're happy to do it. And, uh, yeah. So This isn't a recruit generator for us. It never has been. Uh, since the inception of it, it's just to put content out there in an industry that lacks additional content, uh, really in entertainment. If you look at the channel, we've got a lot of entertainment that we put together, some fun stuff. Uh, the podcast that we do, these podcasts here, uh, we're not getting paid to do this. Uh, we do it because, once again, the industry lacks entertainment. It lacks content from a visual perspective. More importantly, we talk about this all the time, we have a lot of people contact us, and you know, whether they come from another organization or they're working with us, everybody tries to keep their stuff to themselves. Uh, we like to put it out there for everybody, that all boats rise mentality, so that we can better serve the people we're seeing each and every day. So, like Cole said, anytime you want to reach out, anytime you have something you want to see, you want to hear from us, uh, we get a lot of feedback directly, privately. Um, I know you do. I know I do as well. Sure. Don't be afraid to send a message here. Post a comment, and uh, we'd love to tackle something that you'd love to hear about. Also, if you'd like to visit FS Nation, it's up and running, uh, still being upgraded as we speak. You can go to www fsnation.com and uh, get plugged in lots of free content there as well we house a lot of the entertainment uh in information also some training there we're putting uh, training content out mm -hmm. there as well and uh, it kind of gives you a central hub to, to be able to go to in case you want to plug in so as, my, as always my man appreciate you being here let's do it